the Japanese Navy had dominated action in the Pacific, beginning with their attack on Pearl Harbor and subsequent advances. Admiral Yamamoto felt he had to draw the American aircraft carriers into the decisive battle. His choice for a battleground was the American base at Midway Atoll. Cryptographers at Pearl Harbor, under the command of Joe Rochefort, had broken enough of the Japanese naval code to discern that Midway was the Japanese objective. As the sky brightened on the morning of 4 June 1942, Japanese aircraft were sighted by a patrolling PBY and soon confirmed by radar. The message, many planes heading Midway. Taking off from the runways of Midway were Marine Corps pilots and Brewster Buffaloes and Wildcats to defend the atoll. These planes and their valiant pilots were no match for the Japanese Zeros escorting the bombers headed for Midway. Midway was bombed by the Japanese, causing damage to the hospital, runways, hangars, and fuel depot. The American bombers that had left Midway and headed towards the Imperial fleet scored no significant hits on the Japanese carrier force under Admiral Nagumo. But the continued attacks by U.S. Navy, Marine Corps, and Army Air Force planes arriving at different times sowed confusion among the Japanese commanders and disarray in the battle formation. Rear Admiral Frank Fletcher and Admiral Raymond Spruance launched their air groups. The fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo planes from the American carriers flew towards the enemy, while one U.S. submarine found the Japanese fleet and engaged. Enterprise Air Group Commander, Lieutenant Commander Wade McCluskey, sighted Arashi through a break in the clouds. Arashi's wake led McCluskey to the Japanese carrier force and the 10 minutes that wrote a page in our naval history. Dive bombers from Yorktown and Enterprise arrived simultaneously over the enemy carriers. 